All right, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Cable Citizen here. Wanted to talk about a, uh, a project we've been floating around for a while. We're gonna do it a little bit differently than uh, than we planned on, but want to introduce it. So, not so long ago, we went to a uh, school of the American Rifle class. Um, learned a lot there, and some of the things that were talked about for ways to improve uh, rifles. You know, things that you can do, modifying the parts to to potentially improve accuracy. Uh, two things that were talked about were, were polishing feed ramps and then uh, bedding barrels into the upper receivers with a, a bedding compound like Loctite 620. So those two things were introduced as, as a way to improve accuracy. Um, and one of the things that was also talked about was, you know, does pinning a gas block potentially negatively impact accuracy? So um, Chad had some data, um, I should say, Chad had some, so, you know, some anecdotes of people that had shared their data with him um, about having never seen a negative impact on accuracy from betting a barrel and having ne never seen a negative impact on accuracy from modifying feed ramps, from polishing feed ramps properly. And so basically we want to get some data for ourselves here. So, right, trust but verify, basically. So, um the process that we're going to be doing is is taking a rifle. Um, we were going to do several at a time, but just from a time of conducting this experiment, if you will, um, the amount of time it's going to take to do each gun is going to be significant. And really, the the, the big limiting factor is, is optics. Um, having one relatively high power scope to move back and forth between all of these different guns as we do all of these different steps this isn't going to work. So we're doing one gun the whole way through. So we're starting with this one here. So this is a 18 inch uh, Roscoe purebred barrel. Um, it's a, a 223 wild chamber um, rifle gas system. It is in a Veltor Mer upper receiver. Um, our capable bolt carrier group, um, just a standard GI charging handle. Um, and a Sons of Liberty gas block um, that's on there. So we, um, this is a relatively inexpensive, I want to say it's a Vortex Crossfire, I think it is, scope. Um, it's a 4 to 12, um, just so something that we had on a, on a, a not-so-serious use bolt gun that we can repurpose um, for this experiment. So we've got um, basically a mil spec lower. Um, this is a LFT Liberty Fighting Trigger, so not necessarily a match trigger or anything like that. Anyway, um, so the process is we're, we're taking uh, the gun out one at a time, shooting it with some 69 grain gold metal match ammo. Um, all of it's going to be from the same lot. It's all from the same case. Um, so we took we, we built this gun properly, right? So all the torque specs were followed. You know, the, the the barrel nut is greased with Aeroshell 64. Um, the um, the gas block, you know, the, the set screws on this were, were rocks out of the 20 inch pounds. Um, basically, we did everything the way that we'd normally do to assemble a gun. So we took it out, we shot it, and we've got three groups with it. So here's our first group with some gold metal match. Um, there's a little note there that I called one being left. Maybe it was the one that was up whatever. All right. So that was our first group. And then today we went out and, uh, and shot a couple of more. So, um, just to follow along here, we're talking, you know, 1.2 ish or so on, on that. Um, this is definitely a flyer, but let's measure it with and without that one. So we're at, uh, damn near two there. If we dump that flyer out, then we're, you know, 1.1 inches, something like that. Um, this gun was, was shot off of a plastic rest, not like a lead sled or anything. And that's with this, you know, basically a mil spec trigger with a nickel boron coating on it. So uh, and these aren't hand loads or anything, right? This is just some off-the-shelf factory match ammo. So, you know, we've got a little bit of data there, three different five-round groups um, with this gun built this way. So the process now, we're going to take this gun apart. We're going to polish the feed ramps on the barrel, and then we're going to reassemble it the exact same way. So 
polishing the feed ramps on the barrel. Um, you know, so here's here's a Sun's Liberty barrel that's that's got the the nitrided barrel extension. But basically, you know, one of the things that, that Chad was talking about in the class was that if you can polish this and you're improving the consistency of the finish, right? If you're reducing the the amount the, if you're reducing the variable that there might be in the friction of the round going up into the chamber, um, you're reducing a variable where the bullet could have varied amounts of setback, right? So if there's a rough spot, it's not, it, it, or a coarse spot, I should say, right? If there's an area that's providing more resistance across that feed ramp than a different area, it's possible that during the feeding process, um, that the bullet's going to get just a little bit more setback, a little bit more resistance going up into the chamber than it otherwise might, depending upon where on that feed ramp it impacts. So giving those like a, a damn near mirror polish, um, you're reducing the opportunity for there to be a varied degree of friction during the feeding process um, in the cycle of operations. So uh, kind of blew my mind when I heard that. Um, makes sense, right? Can't really refute it. So that's something that we want to get data on. So we're going to take the gun apart. We're going to polish the feed ramps up that way best we can. Probably post some pictures or something like that of the before and after, or, you know, link them into this video, I, I should say. And, um, and then we're going to go back out and shoot it. Use the same ammo, use the same, um, scope, same rest. Um, Probably the same trigger, you know, if, if we don't, then we'll, we'll shoot it with and without this lower. Uh, another one, we've got a Geisley trigger in, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll use that. Anyway, so that's step one. Okay, does um, this polishing the feed ramps change the, the meaning? Does it meaningfully impact the accuracy of the gun? Um, after that step is done, we're going to take the gun apart. And then um, we're going to uh, Loctite 620 bed the barrel extension into this upper receiver. So this barrel and upper receiver combo in particular is pretty darn sloppy. Um, it, the barrel basically falls into the upper receiver. Um, so this is um, an instance where it seems like that step might make a meaningful difference, right? If it was a thermal fit and, and it was a struggle to get that barrel extension in, um, I might be inclined to believe that there would be less of a of a difference with with betting it, um, but this should prove to be a good example um, for for where that step might make a meaningful difference. So that'll be the the second revision, right? We did our baseline. You saw the groups tear apart. Going to do the feed ramps. We're going to reassemble it. We're going to shoot it again. We're going to show you those groups. After that's done, that's when we're going to do the the barrel betting. So once the barrel's bedded, um, we're going to take it out. We're going to shoot it and see with the con with the combined efforts of the, the polished feed ramps and the bedded barrel, what does the gun do? After that's done, um, we're going to go in and pin this gas block to this barrel. And basically what we're watching for is does that detract from the accuracy capability of the gun, the mechanical accuracy capability of the gun? Um it's been long suggested that a pin gas block has has a negative impact. So I want to see it, right? How how significant is it? Is it a tenth of an inch? Is it a quarter of an inch? Is it immeasurable? Does it improve it? Um, so this is a sample size of one. Um, we're going to do the best we can with it. This is just kind of a, a time constraint that we've got here um, for while we're doing this one at a time. And then depending upon how the results for this go, um, we're going to go back through and repeat the same methodology on another gun, on another upper receiver. Shoot it, take it apart, polish the feed ramps, shoot it, take it apart, bed the barrel, shoot it, take it apart, pin the gas block, shoot it, um, and, and document that process and those results all along the way for you guys to join us. So that's what we've got going on. Um, be curious to see what everybody's feedback is if you've done this before if you've watched the change in results after you've done the work curious to hear your feedback as well so uh stay tuned and uh, hopefully this should be a good one thanks